Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about the new and improved version 2 of the shift light. Uh, we're going to go through a lot of the uh, new features that have been added, but first I'd like to say thank you to everyone that's uh, subscribed and watched on YouTube, and everyone that's uh, joined and commented in the forums at chippernot.com. Honestly, a lot of the really good ideas um, for the shift light came from everybody in the community just contributing and offering suggestions and, and testing it on their on their motorcycles or race cars or, or other vehicles. Uh, and so I wouldn't have been able to do it with all of you. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. One of the greatest things about version 2 is that all of the settings are configured through the menu system. You don't have to touch the code at all. You just have to upload it. One of the other great things about version 2 is the new and improved transistor pickup circuit. Uh, we've improve the circuitry so you get a much cleaner uh, signal coming into the Arduino. Uh, we've got um, new RPM sensing options. You know what? Let's just go through the uh, let's just go through the menu. How about that? How about we just dive right into this? All right, to access the menu, we simply push on the rotary encoder and it brings us to our menu screen. Now this first option with the funny little square here is basically just to uh, enter and exit the menu. So after you've gone through all of your options and you want to save and exit, you push this button, it's going to store all of the values that you just set into the Arduino's EEPROM, which is sort of, you can think of it like a hard drive. And so even if you unplug it, it's going to save those variables and those settings for you. So let's just shift through the menu options here and we'll talk about each one of them. The first one is brightness. It's pretty self-explanatory. It allows you to adjust the global brightness on the shift light display. The second option is the activation RPM. This is the point at which the uh, graph starts reading your RPM. Now one of the new um, features for version 2 is that this display now does go above 10,000 RPM. And what it's going to do, because there's only four digits, it's just going to divide it by 10. So it'll, it kind of looks like it loops over itself. Click the button to save it and it'll take us back out to the menu. The second option is the shift RPM. Now this is the point at which the uh, basically the stopping point of the display and once it passes this point it's going to flash and indicate a shift. The sensing option, there's two new sensing options in version 2. There's uh, FR which stands for frequency, frequency measure. It uses a software based sensing option to detect the RPM and then there's an interrupt based sensing option uh, or hardware based. The reason you'd want to choose between the two is just because in different applications one might work better than the other. It's really sort of on a case by case basis but they're both in there for you to use. Right now we're going to use the software one. And now after I do this it's going to require a reboot and so now the shift lights rebooted and we have to enter back into the menu system. So let's go back. The next one is conditioning. What this does is software filter the signal. In some instances, there might be noise or other things contaminating the RPM signal going into the uh, Arduino, and we don't want to give you a false reading. So you can turn this on or off. Um, you'll notice, again, in some instances, it, the Arduino is just so sensitive, it's going to pick up little, little bits of noise. And so this is going to average that out for you and give you a, a little bit more of a truer sense of the R, actual RPM. PPR which stands for pulses per revolution. Basically, if you go and buy any aftermarket tachometer, you're gonna see a little switch on the back that says like four cylinder, six cylinder, eight cylinder. And the reason that they do that is because different engine configurations um, send out different numbers of pulses per revolution of the engine. Without getting too technical about it, this allows you to change that so you can calibrate this for whatever engine uh, size you've got. So for example, most four-cylinder engines uh, send out two pulses per revolution. Uh, Six-cylinder engines send out three pulses per revolution and eight-cylinder engines send out you know four pulses per revolution. But that varies. It varies by manufacturer, by there's this thing called wasted spark. I'm not going to get into it. But there's a lot of different things. If you have an aftermarket ignition, um, you might have a tachometer output on that that again is going to tell you, it's going to give you a different uh, signal. Now when you enter into this menu item, it's going to start to display the RPM and this is to help you calibrate it. When you turn the rotary encoder then, it'll switch and tell you what PPR you are set at. 
So I'm going to leave mine at 3 because I have my little RPM signal generator here configured for a six cylinder engine. All right, the next option is the number of LEDs. Now this is freaking awesome because uh, in version one, no matter what, you always had to change a couple of variables. Uh, and with version two, I sought to eliminate that. So basically you don't have to touch the code at all. You don't have to do any coding. You can configure the entire environment through the menu system here. So to change the number of LEDs, you simply click on this. It'll ask you how many LEDs you got. You push the button and it'll reboot and then you can go back in the menu, continue configuring. Okay, the next menu option is the segmentation. Now, this is kind of neat. It allows you to adjust how your bar graph is segmented. So we can have our first color sort of start and stop here. Our second color, say here, and then our third color. The next option allows you to change your animation style. So you can have the bar graph go left to right, center out, or right to left. Now this is particularly useful whenever you have a circular uh, NeoPixel display because the pixels increment backwards, counterclockwise, and so you can have it go pretty much any way you want. So let's have it, let's change the animation style to go this way. And when we select this, it's going to say you have to redo your segmentation. Basically, you have to redefine how this bar graph is now broken up. So let's have this first color go to there, and then to there, and to there. Same as version one, you can adjust the colors. I'm not going to go into that too much shift colors so you can change how those operate now there's a debug option this allows you to basically output serial uh, information from the USB port on the Arduino so if for whatever reason you need to do some diagnostics or you are modifying the code this is an easy way of just turning on and off the serial output and then finally uh, the reset option uh, if you want to just start from scratch or uh, you want to completely wipe the EEPROM uh, get rid of all your variables. Use this. It's going to completely wipe it. It's going to load it with system defaults. And then you can go ahead and change everything.